Now we're going to move on to thumb CMC opposition. In this, um, we're going to have the patient sitting down with the dorsal forearm resting on the plinth. What I'm going to have the patient do is have them have move their thumb to touch the tip of their pinky. So can you please bring your thumb like this? Okay. And if the patient can do this motion, this is known as normal. There's no range of um, normal range of motion, so there's no goni involved. But in a case where a patient cannot bring their thumb all the way to their pinky, like say for instance, it stops here, I would then measure the distance from the tip of the pinky to the tip of the thumb, which in this case would be four inches. And that's how you would record it. All right. So now we're going to move on to thumb metacarpal fa um, phalanx um, flexion. The patient is going to be sitting with their forearm resting on the plinth. Um, we're going to be using a goni, but I'm going to have the patient first flex their thumb in this motion. So can you please do this motion for me? Okay, good. And the axis of rotation is going to be the metacarpal um, joint, which is right here. The um, stationary arm will be the first metacarpal bone, which will be right over here, along here. And the moving arm is going to be proximal to the phalanx, which is right here. Okay. So we have the axis of rotation at the carpal joint. It's parallel to the first metacarpal bone. We're going to start in neutral. Okay. And can you please flex your thumb in that motion? Okay, good. Is that the furthest you can take it? Mm -hmm. Apply a little overpressure. Any pain? No. Okay. Hold it. And everything's lined up. And I get a reading of 85 degrees. Normal thumb MCP flexion is 90 degrees.